you gonna kick us off this week? Uh, sure, I guess. Uh, sure. Uh, Alright, so, welcome to Social Media Meltdown with Caitlin, and um, I guess Joe, I don't know where you are, I think you're over here. Nope, Just other side. Oh, okay. Over that, there, yep, that's where I'm at. My friend Joe. And, um, like I said, this is Social Media Meltdown, and we're going to be talking today about how to find a job using social media. I know all these people are graduating um, this month, or have graduated in the last uh, week from college, and um, jobs are hard to come by, not just in Michigan where we are, but uh, everywhere. Jobs are really hard to come by, so uh, this is a way you can get a leg up on the competition. This is a way you can do that, but uh, yeah. so so we're going to be going over a couple of different things. Um, but what would you say would be the first step of getting a job? Is it just, do, it just a, create a Facebook profile, make it public, and people are going to find me? Um, I would have to say, you're, if you're going to use, I, no, okay, so if you're going to go out there and look for a job, regardless if you're going to use social media or not, and you're or you're going to do it the traditional way, the job fairs and the visiting every company you like's job board and applying for jobs, the first thing you have to do is make your Facebook private. And I don't care if you're like the most honest person in the whole world and whatever. You have to make your Facebook private. There's always going to be something that someone doesn't like. I don't like their haircut. I don't like um, the outfit that they wore on the weekend. There's always going to be something that someone doesn't like about you. So just take your whole Facebook out of the equation um, and then that way you don't have to hide all because otherwise you're going to have to spend time hiding things on your profile, making sure all your party pics don't show up because uh, that looks bad. Um, even in an industry like mine where um, we're really open on social media and, and, and it's expected that we have you know crazy profiles and do crazy things, um, I still spend a lot of time making sure certain things don't show up. But I have the time and I want to spend the time doing it. Um, but a lot of people don't have the time. Um, so I'm just going to suggest that you just take your Facebook and make it private so no one has to see it. Uh, and then we can move on from there. So that's step one. Step one, step rather than putting yourself out there and say, hey, I'm looking for a job, it is let's lock it down. Before you start looking for that job, lock down that personal information and make sure you look like a well-groomed candidate, too. Um, I heard uh, I heard that you know LinkedIn is a great place to go. It is. Why like, is that? What makes LinkedIn so much better than other fo social networks? LinkedIn is, is really interesting uh, because of the three major social networks, it is the smallest. Um, it has 150 million users, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but it it's the smallest network, but it's one of the most used because it has such a focused content base that people just kind of, they only come there to do one thing, and that's, or they come there to do two things. Uh, they come there to network with their, uh, their current or past uh, co-workers um, or employers, and to look for jobs, even See, though they might that, not say they're looking for jobs. That's the thing. It's always, uh, LinkedIn is like a giant, hey, I'm kind of looking for a job kind of thing. Like, if somebody's updating their LinkedIn profile, they're probably putting their resume out there and career builder and things like that. Exactly. Except um, LinkedIn, uh, I believe it was in October, um, has now bypassed um, career builder and monster and, and all these other traditional places to find jobs. Um, LinkedIn is now the largest job board on the Internet. So it's where... Um, Almost all jobs are posted now. Um, it's actually cheaper to use it that way. It's more professional jobs. Um, so LinkedIn is, is the place to be. Um, also, when you have a LinkedIn profile, and this is, this is what I got uh, originally hired to do, um, there's this new job out there called social recruiting. Um, and it's basically it's like a recruiting job mixed with sales. And you basically cold, cold call people. Um, on LinkedIn and, and try to sell them a job that fits their, their resume on LinkedIn. And so that's why I always say LinkedIn is the most important place that you can be. If, if you're going to wow. choose one social media to use to find a job. And, and, you know, like, I guess my mistake here is, you know, I keep, I, I always keep my monster and my career builder updated 
to to the fullest extent. But and I've always just kind of updated LinkedIn here and there. But it, it, so um, there's a lot of different things you can do with LinkedIn, and there's a lot of different pitfalls and valleys you could fall into. Like mm-hmm. I know you can connect, you know, Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts, <laughs> and just make this your big, uh, you know, social media social networking central. Um, would you recommend doing something like that? I do. I I honestly use LinkedIn more than I use Facebook. Um, And I do this because, uh, I don't know, because I'd rather, not that I'd rather not talk to my friends, um, (laughs) but I really like interacting in all the groups and talking to people that have the same interests as me. Um, I mean, they have groups out there for everything. They have groups out there for clowning, clown schools. You can talk to other people that like clowns. Um, Or anything farmers and um, scientists and engineers and um, IT professionals Um, anything any job you can think of there's groups for on Facebook or on LinkedIn I'm sorry so you can log in and you can network with all these people and bounce ideas off of them um, in groups Uh, ask them for advice um, ask them to watch their live podcast (laughs) (laughs) so there's a lot of different things that you can do and and you're you're only contacting the people that matter to you um, at that point of time. So if you're looking for a job, here you're only talking to people who are also interested in jobs. That's why everyone's on LinkedIn, because they care about their job or they hate their job and are looking for a new job. Yeah, cool. you always know, like, if somebody hasn't logged into LinkedIn for, like, two or three years and then all of a sudden you see them dusting off their account, you're like, uh-oh, what's this guy doing? What's going on? <laughs> Exactly, which is why I recommend that you just go on your LinkedIn all the time anyway and update things just in case you ever get to that point that you want to do it in secret. So nothing looks suspicious, especially in a you know, and I guess it depends on your field. A lot, a lot of places aren't going to be checking up on your LinkedIn account to see if you're grazing, you know, for new jobs. But, no. but uh, you know, depending on your field, it might be like that all the time. Well, um, it depends because. Uh, if your your company posts jobs on LinkedIn, which most companies do now, um, they have a, a company uh, login, mm-hmm. and when you log into the company under the recruiter page, it shows all of your employees that have listed yep. your company as their job, and then it gives you their status update. So you'll see um, Joe updated his mm-hmm. um, his profile today. Joe asked for recommendations from his co-workers today. <laughs> See, and that's why I think LinkedIn is kind of a double-edged sword, though. Um, I, I don't have anything linked to my LinkedIn. Like, I, for, for some reason, my Twitter got stuck with my LinkedIn for a little while, and I had to go through and just delete all that content. Because my Twitter audience is a lot different than my LinkedIn audience, you know? <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't recommend linking them up unless you're using them in a professional manner. Maybe you have a professional Twitter account and a fun Twitter account. You know, like... Wh- That's so hard. It is, it is. And you I might as well just post things on LinkedIn as it applies to it. Well, but you're definitely right. You have to know your audience. And LinkedIn is a completely different audience from Facebook and your typical Twitter audience. Well, now, speaking of Twitter, is Twitter at all useful in getting a job? Do you, is there a way to land a position using Twitter? Have you heard of this? Um, it's more of using Twitter as like a, um, like more of like a, a traditional job board, searching the hashtags for like jobs Detroit or um, jobs in automotive or jobs in IT, um, and and you'll come up with some, you'll get some hits uh, if the the recruiters are using Facebook or using sorry Twitter uh, the right way. But then I'm going to post a link to um, this article that I'd written a while ago where I, I found all of these different Twitter accounts that post jobs. So there's like um, accounts that just post developer jobs, art director jobs, copywriter jobs, jobs in hip hop, um, everything. So there's jobs by field and then there's jobs by type. So if you're looking for internships or freelance or entry level, um, temporary jobs, um, and then jobs by region, I have. Um, and then a section for just, like, general jobs. Um, the one that I recommend the most is Tweet My Jobs. They have an account and they use a hashtag. Um, and they basically just troll Twitter and repost every time they find a job posting somewhere on Twitter. 
Um, so that's kind of cool. But it's not used as much as like a recruiting tool as LinkedIn would be. It's more work on your end. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, although with LinkedIn, you can go in and you can apply for jobs in LinkedIn. Um, there's also recruiters that are going to try to contact you in any way possible. Now, what about, are, are there alternative networks, um, other than like the, the big three, if you will, you know, um, Twitter, Facebook, and we'll say LinkedIn at this point. But uh, are there any alternative networks or smaller networks you could think of? Like, I'm thinking something like uh, Dice.com or something like that. Is that more of an old style, like career build? You know, I, I don't want to kind of group them together, but there's a, there are a lot of small communities out there. And there are. Um, the only thing with them is they're mainly resume sharing sites. So, so what, what's not, the difference? By using a social network, you're going to get more of your personality across, which is really what sells you in the end. So you can have a killer resume and the worst, um, the r worst people skills, uh, and now people... Uh, like people that are hiring have now wasted time bringing you in for an interview just to learn that you're a bump on a log and they really don't want you around because you don't fit with their office dynamics. However, if they can see you on LinkedIn and you, they can see all your recommendations and they can um, see what kind of articles you like because you're posting things and how you interact with groups on LinkedIn, um, they still get to see your personality come out but in a professional manner. I so. think, so is LinkedIn the grown up Facebook? LinkedIn is definitely the grown-up Facebook. <laughs> okay, now that we got that wrapped up nicely, are sites like Career Builder, Monster, and and other job hunting sites like that are they dead now? Or are are they are, are they on the way out? These are definitely moving to LinkedIn. Their prices are competitive for posting jobs, um, and it's gotten down to the point that based on how many job slots you buy on LinkedIn, it's actually cheaper than using um, Career Builder or um, whatever the other ones are, and uh, and the reason why a lot of people are moving to link or companies are moving to LinkedIn as well is that it has the tie-ins with social networking, so they can share the jobs with their network that they've already built on LinkedIn. Because, say, I have a company and nine hundred people have said they work there, so they're already part of my company's network. So now, when my company posts a job those 900 people can now share that job with their infinite amount of connections. So then you get into social job sharing. Whereas if I post a job on Career Builder, no one's really going to see it unless they go and look for it. Yeah. So by using social media as a way of, of putting jobs out there, it's more of like the, the push marketing rather than pull. And uh, it, it's a lot more effective on their part and then you feel, as, a, as an applicant, um, you feel like they were more interested in you and you got to... It's a less pressured situation um, because people don't feel as, as under, under a microscope that way because um, they get to let their personality shine and their profile shine out, so... So, um, it's very it's, interesting. It, it is. It's. It sounds like uh, LinkedIn's the place to be, which is funny yeah. because I. I guess I never really used it as the tool that that you're using it. It sounds like it's a lot of work to be on LinkedIn. It sounds like you have to re really much invest a lot of your time when w these other sites that are more passive. Um, I don't think they pay the dividends. You know, like I. I've applied for many, many jobs on Career Builder and, and uh, Monster and Dice and all these different places, and um, and even. So let me ask you a question. So you're on Dice and all these other kind of um, websites, and mm -hmm. you posted your resume, correct? Yes. Um, how many cold calls do you get? Uh, for jobs that you have not applied for. Oh, oh, and see, that's that's the awful part. I know they're selling my information. <laughs> I, I get, I well, back when I applied, I haven't applied for a job in a year or so. But, uh, um, I mean, I was getting it quite a bit. I get, on average, 10 to 20 cold calls a week. A week? Oh. I was yeah. going to say, a day? Oh, my gosh, you're in demand. No, that's funny, a week. You know what, though? Um, it's a, and that's how I pick up a lot of freelance jobs, because <laughs> although I have a full-time job, I can take on, um, depending on the workload, some freelance jobs, um, and there people are out there looking 
for other people on LinkedIn. Maybe they just want to connect for now because they might need your services in the future. Um, but that's the great part. As long as you keep up a good resume mm -hmm. on LinkedIn and just let your profile sit, log in maybe every couple weeks just to check it out. Um, maybe update something so it you know pings up on someone's mm -hmm. uh, status board um, or status wall. But otherwise, it's it's not that much work. Um, it, it doesn't, you know, it sounds like the... A lot because it's what interests me. Um, but I know a lot of people that are, have been very successful applying for jobs on LinkedIn haven't done um, much group work at all. Um, it's, it sounds like for what you put in, you can get a lot out of it, especially if you're in a position where people are, are looking for that kind of stuff. I imagine you see a higher return on investment in your time invested because your industry is so heavily based on LinkedIn. I, I don't know if for a traditional job you're going to see that kind of... Uh, that kind of well, on LinkedIn, the number one job recruiters on LinkedIn are looking for um, IT professionals. And second is, um, let's see, it goes IT, and then I just read these stats the other day. <laughs> what is the other one? Floris? No, it's, a, it's like a... Anyway, but it's just another traditional uh, professional business job, and I, I can't think of what is it, it is. HR or something like that? It may have been. So... And it's not, it's not really us. I mean, my job is, you know, less than 1% of the world's population has my job. Like, no one has my job. It's like the, the most least common. The um, most least common job ever. It is. It's where I have a really hard time finding a job. <laughs> but it, it's out there. And it's out there for every industry um, on LinkedIn. It, there's... The recruiters are out there, and they're looking for people to fill their jobs. So if it's something you are going to find on Monster, it's something you're going to find on uh, well, LinkedIn. You know, like the, the other way I liked, I liked using LinkedIn is, is the fact that, you know, you could find a job on Monster or Career Builder or any other site, and you can do a little bit of snooping around on LinkedIn, find the person you need to talk to, Exactly. And actually, kind of do a little bit of digging, because I mean, you need to do everything you can to stand out in this uh, in in this world today. Exactly. And, so and now, you can not use only LinkedIn. on LinkedIn, you can see their jobs, but now you can see all of their employees. You exactly. Can maybe pinpoint the exact person that might that you be need to talk to, and you can call in and ask for you know whoever in HR or whoever, and just say, hey, you know, I applied on Monster and I found your contact information on LinkedIn. I want you to let you know that I'm super interested, maybe not phrase it like that, but very interested in the position and uh, looking forward to hearing back from you. And just be professional about it and you won't come off as some like sleazy, slick back hair <laughs> Joe Cariotti kind of guy. <laughs> Is that what you look like when you go and get a job? Oh, I, I, like, I'm Joe and I'm awesome. I, I, I have a pretty cool vibe, I guess. <laughs> Pretty laid back kind of guy, but not too laid back. No. Um, yes, hey, this guy will work, and he might even have some fun while he does it. Let's hire him. Um, th but that's my favorite way that I've used LinkedIn. I've used it as a kind of a tool to to leverage my information that I know about these guys to to make a personal relationship. Because the really, when it comes down to it, the way you get a job is by knowing someone. There's very few times where you can get a job in a thriving industry if you don't have a reference. Um, I mean, there are places where you can do it, and there's definitely people that just get in on their own merit. But if you can, if you know somebody on the inside of an organization, you're able to connect. And and even on LinkedIn, you know, it's like, oh, I didn't know that person worked for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and you could you could find out a couple of different things. It, this sounds like a big giant ad for LinkedIn, but it is a good it, it is a good way I, to uh, to connect. And the more with people. people you network, and then now you want to leave, and you have all these friends that you went to college with that were in the same program as you. So now you can see where all your friends were, mm -hmm. then try to get in with them. It's the it's great for looking for a job, and, for, and for, I feel like recent definitely. grads take it for granted, and, and they don't even have profiles, and they don't take social media seriously in the professional world, but when it comes down to it, companies do take LinkedIn very seriously. Um, when I started at my company, um, my first day there, I updated my LinkedIn profile in the morning before I went to work, because I didn't want to do it the day before and jump the gun, 
So I did it the morning before I went in. Um, later that day when I checked my email, I realized that our CEO had added me on LinkedIn. <laughs> Apparently, uh, every time someone joins the company um, and it shows up that you know the company now has one new employee, uh, he goes in and he <laughs> adds them to his network, which is really cool. And it kind of shows you that it goes all the way up to the top. Mm -hmm. I mean, these aren't just recruiters. Um, the general population of professional workers take LinkedIn very seriously. So if you, if you have any questions or anything like that specifically, I, I don't know if we have any uh, live people on the live stream right now, but uh, if we did, they would they can ask a question. They can ask a question, yes. Um, and then also we have our... Uh, we have our email inbox, which is sadly empty this week. Nobody no. sent us anything of any merit. But we do read all the emails, and we do appreciate all the emails. It, our email address is socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. Again, socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. Um, let's go on to our special features of this week, our plugs, our, our, our things that we are really liking. Um, Caitlin, you got a really interesting one, but I'm going to steal your thunder real quick. <laughs> I'm not gonna steal your thunder, but I okay, think I don't steal my plug. I won't steal your plug. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna jump in front, really. I'm gonna let you finish. Um, my my thing for this week. It's not really a social media site, but you may have heard of it. It's uh, Craigslist.com. Oh. Yes, it's what is really that? it's a really interesting site, right? But uh, if you go to actually the job section of Craigslist, it's a lot of work, but uh, there's all kinds of little gems there and if you weed through the junk and the dirt and the just absolute debauchery which is posting <laughs> there is abs there there are some really good opportunities on craigslist and it's often overlooked but even if you need some kind of short-term work or something like that craigslist is a really good place to go and uh you know apply to be an apprentice butcher or if you want to trim or be a carpenter or if you're a VW enthusiast, or, you know, like, and this is just stuff I'm reading right now. Two brats in a broom. These people are starting a new company uh, that they need people to help cleaning. I mean, $15 an hour. <laughs> you know, like, there, there's just all kinds of cool stuff, and you can, there's even a lot of posts like, hey, you know, I can't pay right now, but you can have steak in my company. Not a steak, like of the meat, but like you can oh. you can own part of this company if you're on the oh, ground dang, floor he's of it. Out dinner. <laughs> yeah, I know. You got so I saw I saw your eyes light up. Oh, dinner, free dinner. But so, so I don't eat red meat, but I would have tried to bargain with him. Yeah, how about some chicken? Um, <laughs> anyway, so I would go check that out too. And if you are looking for a job, Craigslist is a cool place to go. And I uh, did use Craigslist in the beginning. Craigslist, I mean, like. There is a lot of crap out there, and if if it doesn't make you cry, it will make you laugh. <laughs> so I, I applied for this marketing job, and it sounded so good on Link or on uh, Craigslist. And then some person called me, and they were like, "I'm answering your your email on our Craigslist ad." And I was like, "Yes, I got this job." And they're like, "Do you want to come in for an interview?" And I said, "Sure." So they gave me the address, and I get there, and um, there was all these. Um, skankily clad women oh no and this marketing job was actually for bacardi rum and they call marketing um the people that go to the bars um, so, but after a hundred thousand dollars education i really did not think that was the best place for me at that point to get started hey so do they did did it clue you in when they're like hey send a full body shot and a face shot where you're like huh, okay i'll send it but i'm still coming did they make you do that they asked for my Facebook profile. I knew like, it. Of course, in they, my industry, that's like okay. I mean, that's yeah. So, so that, common question. Normally, for normal people in uh, regular rat race jobs, uh, when they ask for your Facebook profile, you know, like you wouldn't expect them to, you know, they're shopping. You're like, yeah, this girl could be a Bacardi model. Why not? <laughs> so anyone that's out there looking for a marketing job, there's a lot of those out there. There, there, where there like, are, and and if you're if I mean, if you have a, if you post a phone number, you're gonna get tons of calls for insurance sales too. Everybody wants you to be an insurance salesman. Some people it works out for, some people it doesn't. But uh, you get a lot of those. Um, but every for, I posted my bike for sale the other day, mm -hmm. and I got this email today about this girl, and she was like, "Your ad sounded so interesting," and then she like gave her website. 
a oh dress, gosh. Yeah, obviously to like porn. Um, but she also attached a photo of herself, and I have an iPhone which automatically opens the photos. Oh no. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, so I'm I'm looking for a new bike for for Sarah. So uh, send that oh. send that Craigslist post over my way. I'll take a look at oh. it. It's a nice bike, it's a Schwinn. Oh, it's new. It's from last year. Is it pink? It's white and pink. It's mostly white. With pink is it a Southport? Is it what? Is it a Southport Schwinn? No, it's a fa- Fairwear hmm. or something. I'll like that. check it out. I'll check it. Out. Anyway, what do you have this week? Wayfair. For, That's the Wayfair. Oh yes. <laughs> Um, anyways, I just wanted to plug our upcoming event um, way in advance. Uh, we don't really have any details at all, um, but Mashable's annual social media day is Saturday, June 30th. Um, and Joe and I plan on going to wherever and whatever the event is in Detroit. Last year it was at... Um, the Motor City Casino, yeah, right? Motor City Casino uh, and Hotel in Detroit. Um, and I've been in contact with their social media director there, and it looks like it's probably going to be there again, um, but they're not ready to make anything official. Um, so we'll keep you guys updated. Um, but we're planning on a really cool live show, and we'll bring in people to interview and, and all kinds of stuff. And um, maybe it'll be a really long show. Uh, depending on how long the event is. We'll, we'll definitely we- get a lot of content and meet a lot of good people. And hopefully, you know, if you're watching, come on down, wherever it is. <laughs> It'll be fun, and, and we'll keep everyone updated because it's a really great event. I went last year, and um, Jordan and I from Girly Nerdy Goodness interviewed some people um, about social media, and we had a great time. And um, we actually had done it out in the hallway, like the main hallway where everyone was coming in at, and people would just kind of stop at our booth and look at us, and then just be like, excuse me, and then they would interrupt us to talk to us, which was kind of funny, and then we would bring them in the camera and ask them a couple things, and um, I, I it was think, a lot of fun. You know, I'll work on a setup, but I think we will be able to do a live broadcast from there, and I have some good mics that uh, won't pick up all the sound and you know I think I think we're gonna have uh, it's gonna be a good time and if we can oh, cover, so good. yeah I, I'm so excited this is gonna be great so uh, social so media if you live in Detroit ch- stay tuned for that but if you don't um, last year I believe there were 90 different meetups all over the United States for social media day mm-hmm. um, in I believe seven states it's an actual state holiday Wow. Um, June 30th. So, uh, I mean, look around in your area and see what's available. It's sponsored by Mashable. Um, I believe this year, no, I don't want to say it, but I think their partnership is with Verizon, but I'm not positive. Um, So, cross that out. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But it's a really great event, and it's a great way to meet people. Uh, especially if you're interested in social media, which I'm assuming you are because you're watching the show. If you made it this far, you're definitely interested. Or they were just looking for a job. <laughs> oh, or they could be looking for our awesome advice because we're great at jobbing. Yes. So <laughs> it'll be a, it'll be a good time, and I'm really excited. Super excited! Can't wait for that, especially since uh, you know maybe we can have some. Uh, some awesome content and meet some watchers. I wanted to say listeners for a second, but people watch it. So exactly. that's kind of cool. Anyway, um, like I said, you can follow me on Twitter, on Z Twitters, at speedy 40 or you can follow the wonderful Caitlin Shelby, at Caitlin Shelby on Twitter. And you can always send us an email if you have some questions, comments, or concerns for the show. Our email address is socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. Again, that email address is... Take it away for, for me. Oh, yeah. I just was blinking. Oh, I know. I'm watching you. Anyways, it's social media meltdown <laughs> at justcoolenough.com. That's right. So uh, <laughs> let us know. Let us know. All right, yeah. Well, that's it. We'll, we'll play the music. We can dance it off. All right, yeah. <laughs>